The beginning of wisdom. And here we go. The beginning of wisdom and is get wisdom, skillful and godly wisdom. For skillful and godly wisdom is the principal thing. And with all you have gotten, get understanding, discernment, comprehension, and interpretation. That's right. The beginning of wisdom is get wisdom. Amen. If you want to be wise, you got to get to, you got to gain some, some, some wisdom to be wise. And how do you gain it? It comes from God. Amen. That's what we really need to know. Amen. That wisdom comes from God. And, 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 and when you understand that, let's see if we can find something else that's going to help us uh, with our understanding. Um, um, the scripture is referring me to go to James. So we're going to do that. We're going to go to James and see what it says there. Amen. In James, the first chapter. Amen. And it looks like I'm at the fifth verse. So let's see what it, let's see what it says there. Let's see what the scribe James wrote. In his epistle. And I say the scribe James. I didn't say the apostle. Note I did not say the apostle James. The writer. The scribe if you will. For the epistle of James. Is not the apostle James. The apostle James has a brother. By the name of John. Who was that disciple whom Jesus loved. They were both known as the sons of Zebedee. Because their father was Zebedee. They were fishers. And when Jesus called them into service, they were in their boats with their father, mending their nets. And Jesus says, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The Bible says straightway they left their boats and their father and followed after him. This James is the half brother of Jesus. And this is what it says in, in, in verse 5, uh, 1 James uh, verse 5. Amen. The word of, the God, word of God says this. If any of you is deficient in wisdom. Let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding. And it will be given to him. So if you want wisdom, you got to go to the source. And where do you go to the source? Well, the word of God says you go to God. Now, I know many of you think that you can go someplace else and get that wisdom. And you still and you do. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. This brings us home, y'all. Yesterday, I pointed out that unfortunately... We have become lazy, lazy, lazy people. Many of us, many of us, sadly, do not like to uh, utilize something that God gave us. He gave us a measure of intelligence. And in that measure of intelligence, he gave us the ability to sort of uh, uh, go through processes and gain understanding about things. And, and, and it's called, and, and the thing that we have that we can utilize is called our brains. Many of us do not want and have, matter of fact, have gone on a shutdown with our brain because we have become a, a, a complacent people. We have become such a complacent people. We are operating more or less in the mindset that, you know what? I don't want to have to think about nothing. I don't want to have to figure nothing out. I'm going to let everything else be done for me. And all I want to do is just follow whatever it is that I need to follow. And what am I saying? Lord have mercy. We have become reliant upon sources of information that are totally unreliable. Lord help me, help me, Holy Ghost. The other day, there was a report, y'all. Lord help us. There was a report that uh, young Jaden Smith, the son of Will and Jada, Jada Pinkett Smith had committed suicide. And that thing went viral on the internet. On the internet. The super uh, uh, highway. The super uh, technolo technological highway. That information highway that many people have become addicted to. So much addicted to it. They don't even pay. They don't even, they don't even check about the things that they hear. They run with that thing. And oh my God, I'm going back home down in Mississippi, y'all. They take that thing and they go off and they start running boogity, boogity, boogity with it. Just like, uh, oh yeah, Martin Lawrence had a, had a, 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 a tour, a concert tour, comedy concert tour that he had titled uh, back in the 90s, amen, when he was real hot. In his comedy, y'all, he was real. Martin Lawrence was a bad young man. He had a nasty, he had a mouth, y'all. He absolutely had a mouth. But that boy was a comic genius. He did a tour called Run Tell That. 
R-U-N-T-E-L-D-A-T. Run, tell that. That's what many people are doing today. They get information from the internet and they're running and, and, they run and, 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 and sprouting off. Oh, well, my God, they're acting like reporters for the internet. And they act like it's the gospel. Like it's the gospel. Amen. Oh, my God. And then, and then what happens is when you get out there and start spreading the stuff that gets put out there on the Internet, then you become a party to, to this whole, this whole uh, uh, mess that is created on the Internet. Don't you know that there are many people that are on, the only reason they're involved with the Internet is because they're having theater, you know. They're having theater, theater in, on the Internet. They're creating. Matter of fact, they're like writers, uh, producers, and directors. They create, oh my God, they're creating scenarios on the internet and they're engaging people unwittingly as actors, as players in this theater. And that's what happens to us when we go out there, see something on the internet and start reporting that thing like it was the gospel. Uh, Jaden Smith is not dead, y'all. He did not commit suicide. Lord help us. Whose report are you believing? Now, getting back to uh, Proverbs, the fourth chapter, I'm going to finish up. We're going to get back to Isaiah. Yeah, yeah, it says, it says the beginning of wisdom is get wisdom, skip. We heard that, and we understood why it says that. But understand what it said in that second part of this scripture. And with all you have gotten, get understanding, discernment, concern, comprehension, and interpretation. Why is that? Simply for based upon what I just said. Amen. Based upon what I just said, if you don't understand what you're talking about, you're wise, but you don't know, you don't understand how did you become wise. You don't even understand wisdom. Well, I'm, I'm going to take us back again. I ain't going back down home, but I'm going to go back in time, in my time. Amen. Oh, my God. There was an artist for some of you young folks. Y'all may know about it because his music is played a lot. And matter of fact, in the hip hop world, a lot of his a lot of the things that he did was sample because uh, James Brown was the original rapper. Oh, my God. Yes, he was. James Brown had a song back in the day. And one of the lines used to say, uh, 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 used to say that uh, you're talking loud and saying nothing. Talking loud and saying nothing. Because what are he saying? What am I saying? Is that when you have a lot of wisdom, you have wisdom. But you don't even know and don't even understand the wisdom. That's why the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. And with all you have gotten, get understanding. Because if you don't understand what you're wise about, then what is the wisdom? How is the wisdom helping you? You talking loud, but you ain't saying nothing. Because you don't even know what you're saying. Or why you're saying it. Lord have mercy. We are like sheep led to the slaughter. Whose report are you believing? Praise God. Uh, welcome Joshua uh, Rodriguez. Praise God. Amen. God bless you, sir. This is one of my um, former students from last year at Urban Promise Academy in the city here in Wilmington, Delaware. When I say former students, God blessed me to teach some Bible study to them last school year. And I'm grateful and thankful for that. Thank you for joining us, Josh. Uh, God bless you. Uh, 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 where's your sister? Jasmine. Hey, Amen. God bless you. So, yeah, so we're going back to Isaiah. We're back in Isaiah, y'all. We're in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. And, and, and I just, and I, and I brought us, I'm bringing us up to snuff. Amen. So let us do, what we're doing is we're going, we're, we're trying to get you to understand uh, uh, what, what, is, what we're talking about here. In the book of Isaiah, in the, in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah, y'all, is known as the Messianic prophet. He's also known one of the, uh, as one of the major prophets in the, in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Amen. They categorize the, te the prophets as major and minor. He's a major prophet. And, and, and we understand, that we know the story of Isaiah as, as, it, as it's outlined in chapter 6. Amen. He, he is a, a prophet of God, but he did not he did not have the understanding that he needed to have about God until the year that King Uzziah died. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. For it was in the year that King Uzziah died. Let's go to that chapter real quick. Uh, the sixth chapter, because that's going to help us explain something even further about whose report are you, are you believing. Lord, help us, Holy Ghost. Amen. The Bible says, in the year the king of Zion died, sixth chapter, first verse, and I'm in the Amplified Bible. In a vision, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high lifted up, and the skirts of his train filled the most holy part of the temple. Now, now some people will say, well, what's the significance? Why, are the, why does the, the, the chapter start off talking about in the year the king of Zion died? Well, it's very plain and simple. He didn't see the Lord until the year the King Uzziah died. Why is that? 
Well, let me explain. King Uzziah was a great king, uh, a revered king. Amen. Uh, the people loved him. He, he treated them well. And so, therefore, uh, they held him in high esteem. So much so that the prophet Isaiah uh, did something that the word of God warns us against. We got to be careful how we hold people in high esteem. Even those that are uh, that, that, that represent something to us, that, that aids us, assists us, uh, encourages us, amen, or, or does anything that, that, that oh, what, what can I say, that benefits us. Don't, 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 don't get it twisted. There ain't but one God and he's a jealous God and he will have no other God besides himself. So anytime that you exalt a person, place, or thing, in high measure above God. You have, cre you have created not only an idol, but a little G-O-D. You have created an Uzziah. That's what it is. That's what an Uzziah is for us. In, in Isaiah's day, it was absolutely the king Uzziah. For us, people, a person, place, or a thing can represent an Uzziah for us. And so what, what am I saying? That when you have somebody that, that, that is operating in a sense like your God, how you got room? You don't have no room for the true God because you already got a God in his place. And, and, and you're listening and you're adhering to that, that person there. You're putting more emphasis on that person than the real and true God because, again, you don't know God. Not the real one. Because you got another one sitting in this place. So something has to happen. Something has to happen. Just like it did for us, for Isaiah, your God, that one that you have, that you have supplanted in his place, must die. That's why some of the people, Lord have mercy, here we are. That's a message for somebody. Some of the people that started out on your journey, they may not end up, uh, the rest, go the rest of the way with you. Why? Because it may be time for them to move on. I'm not going to say die, uh, but, <laughs> but it may be time to move on. And when they move on, then you move on, onward, upward towards your, your uh, purpose in God. Now, how do I know that to be so? Something similar happening like that in the Bible, y'all. Remember, God called Abram out of the land of Ur of the Chaldeans. And he told Abram, come ye from among your kindred. And I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Well, Abram came, but he came with baggage. Not just the baggage that he needed to go on the journey that God was going to take him on because he didn't know where he was going. But he came with his nephew, Lot. God said, come ye from among your kindred. Abram came out of the land of Ur of the Chaldeans with his nephew, Lot. And he made the journey with him up to a point. Uh, eventually, uh, Lot ended up settling in Sodom and Gomorrah. Abram was somewhere else. The angel of the Lord came and told Abram, I'm about ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. That is a perverse and wicked city, a village. I'm getting ready to destroy, utterly destroy every living thing there. I'm going to destroy. And when Abram heard that, he says, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. God, God. And I'm, I'm isogeting this text, y'all. He said, wait a minute. God, God. Uh, um, you know, I, I know that you're sovereign and you're Lord and, and you can do whatever you want to do. But I just got, I, I got a concern, God. I just got a question. Uh, uh, if you can find any righteous there, will you destroy it? No. What if you find, let's say, let's get us on for numbers sake, God. Let's throw a number. 50? No, I won't destroy. 40? No. 30? 20, 10? 1. For one, you won't destroy it. No. But guess what? There was none righteous there. And yet, Abram, uh, nephew, Lot, and his family was there. God told Abram, because he, he had favor. That Abram had favor with God, y'all. And so what God told Abram, he says, you go. Gather your nephew and his family. And get them up out of Sodom and Gomorrah. For I will utterly destroy that place. And when they leave, tell them do not look back. Well, God, Abram did what God told him. The angels of the Lord came down there. And they spoke to Lot and his family. And Lot finally gathered, gathered himself together after he had to separate the people in Sodom and Gomorrah. Because, Lord have mercy, they tried to take hold of... Of, of, the, of the angels of the Lord and they wanted to engage in oh my God, illicit and immoral sex with them yeah, they wanted to do that because that's how wicked and perverse they were so they left Sodom and Gomorrah and as they was leaving 
Lot's wife turned around to look back on what she was leaving. And why did she do that? Well, just imagine this, y'all. They had established themselves in that place. They had probably, they were probably uh, 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 in prominence in that place. Amen.